How you doing, y'all? Welcome to Confidence. On today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about self-love. We're going to talk about being single. We're going to talk about a little bit of follow-up from the last podcast. Uh, Somebody had questions about motivated men. Uh, A little follow-up from the previous podcast. Also, we have an audience situation that I will tackle at the end. So, order of things. Motivated men, we're gonna talk about it a little bit really quick, just some follow up from the last episode. Then we're gonna talk about kind of just like where I'm at, you know, since the last episode, very vulnerable episode. Um, you know, kind of how I'm feeling, just navigating singlehood. And we're gonna talk about all the things that you guys have submitted uh, in regards to. I asked you guys the question, um, what's the hardest part about being single? So I'm actually gonna address all of the major ones uh, that you guys mentioned, and then I do have an audience situation for the end. So we got a fucking packed house. Let's get to work. Uh, I'm excited. So at the end of the last podcast, I was talking about how you know motivated women, you know, they really should shoot for men that are motivated, right, or on their level or higher, because it's too hard when you're trying to motivate him to get his shit together, and also the pitfall of like when you are trying to motivate him instead of solving his problems and telling him how to do things, like holding him accountable to that, holding up your boundaries. And if he makes the progress, he does. If not, see you later. So uh, someone asked a question. They said, I have a follow-up question. Why do men who aren't motivated become more motivated with another woman after a breakup where he was with a highly motivated woman? So I guess in her experience, she feels that a guy has left her, right? Maybe she's highly motivated. And Uh, essentially she sees, or it appears he is more motivated now that he is in another relationship with another person. Now, I, I think the simple answer to this question is this, you know, the only way that people actually do change is when it's necessary, right? And this is why I'm telling you that you need to hold him accountable instead of telling him how to solve his problem, right? It's the difference between giving somebody welfare versus being like, all right, sink or swim. You know what I'm saying? If you give somebody a life jacket, are they going to need to learn how to swim? No, they're not, right? But if you put them in the deep end, you say, all right, figure it the fuck out. <laughs> Live or die. Much different energy, right? You are going to start paddling. You're start trying to figure shit out. And I think that's kind of what happens is when an unmotivated man or a guy that's really, I think it really comes down to is a guy that's gotten comfortable because that's the thing too. In life, we're all like this. There's moments where we're on our A game. We're fucking crushing it. And then sometimes in life, let's be honest, like sometimes you get into a relationship, you settle down a little bit and you take your foot off the gas. And especially if you got a partner that's supporting the fuck out of you, sometimes you don't feel the need to make a change or amp it up or get going. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what happens, right? Is if he's with you and you've been taking care of everything the entire time, Uh, you know, you finally start to speak up for yourself, set those boundaries. And let's just say, hypothetically, he rejects you, moves on to another relationship. And it it appears as if he's more motivated now than he was with you. To me, it's because you have made him uncomfortable. He has finally gotten to the point where he had to get uncomfortable enough to change and to shift. And that's what happens for a lot of people. Think about this. How many people, men or women, they get the post breakup fucking comeback story, right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's got that post breakup glow up where they just go fucking hard and they take care of themselves. But in reality, a lot of those people, when you really look at it, they weren't putting that work in when they were in the relationship. And it's funny because they go on there and they're like, oh, you know, you fucking left a good one. It's like, you're probably not wrong, but who knows how you really were showing up in that relationship. For a lot of people, like I said, when you get into a relationship, you tend to get comfortable. I know a lot of people that are like that. They get into something and, you know, again, just the, the drive and the energy towards the things that they care about just start to diminish. Um, and then obviously, again, when you get broken up with, what is that? It's a slap in the face. It's like, all right, <laughs> it's only you now. You know what I'm saying? Wake up. And, you know, I think maybe going to another woman, maybe that's what it is, right? Maybe she has better boundaries, to be honest. Maybe she's not as motivated as you, but she has better boundaries. Or she's actually requiring from him a little bit more energy and effort in order for her, uh, for him to stay in that relationship. And I think that's what happens. And that's why I'm trying to tell you, you really need to date somebody that's on your motivation level. Because to be honest, what ends up happening is people end up being dead weight in your life because you're picking up the slack for somebody that maybe is not capable or wanting to do that. And, and that's what I'm trying to tell you is that like, that's why you can't solve the problem. And, and again, give too much of like the support and the I'll call it the welfare because you're not allowing that person to grow. You're not actually allowing that person to, Um, you know, put in their side, 
right? Like, so for instance, let's take it on like a, like a smaller level. Like if you really want somebody to help out with the dishes, but every single time they don't do the dishes, you're just like, oh, I'll just do it anyways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bitch about it and I'll complain. Like you never do these. And then I just start doing them. What happens in that dynamic? Nothing changes, right? Are, are they going to start doing the dishes? No, probably fucking not. And, and you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to leave the shit stacked out there. And that's why it's really annoying to date somebody that's not on your level motivation wise is because that shit happens, right? They're not doing their part. And that gets very frustrating. And, and then again, you have two options, right? Option one is again, you, you speak up, you set your boundary and you know, you just hope that they start to make some changes and some shifts. Or the other part is you accept their lack of energy and you end up doing double. And I think that's really a tough part about relationships though too is like, you know, they're so dynamic. Uh, I was coaching this one girl recently and that's kind of the dynamic she had. She met this guy when they first met each other. They were both on the same level. Like she's like this hardcore business owner, entrepreneur, lots of energy. I could just tell from her you know, the way that she was talking to me, like she's got it. You know what I'm saying? She's, she's on top of her shit. And what happened was, is like this guy ended up getting an injury. And after his injury, he kind of just started to coast. You know what I'm saying? And that's, what's weird too, is like sometimes shit happens, right? I, I hear a lot from my coaches where again, like a guy will like, you know, something will happen in his family or he'll get sick or, or something happens. Right. And then what happens is you know, you are there for them, right? You support them through that time. You know what I'm saying? You're helping them out. You're doing a little bit extra because you're just like, all right, you know, I, tough circumstances. And this is where it gets tricky. But then what ends up happening is sometimes I feel like they get used to that dynamic and they get used to you taking care of everything that it never actually flips and switches. And that's the thing is for this girl, like she was dating this guy for like a year, two years. And then it's crazy because people can change in that amount of time. And this is why relationships are so tricky and hard to begin with. And, and honestly, uh, you know, why sometimes they don't really last forever. Because if you have a partner that showed up one way for one year, and then the whole second year is a completely different person, I mean, that's very difficult to manage. And sometimes you can't see it because the change is very slow and insidious, right? It's like, very slowly you start to take care of everything and you're doing a lot and then they're just kind of coasting a little bit and it's, and it's okay in the moment, but you don't realize a year goes by then you're just like sitting there with all this resentment in your hands and you're like, yo, what the fuck? Like you have not stepped up at all, you know? But, but the, also the problem becomes is this is why we can't people please. And this is why we got to know when we're not feeling right about something. Because if you're feeling that they're taking advantage or you're feeling like you're doing more than they are, this is where we really got to speak up and have really great boundaries. Because this is what happens because ultimately you end up holding on to resentment. Then you're telling them what to fix, but, but they never actually do it because you're so used to doing all the shit. It's tricky. And that's what I'm trying to say. So sometimes you get rid of that partner and what happens? They get their shit together. You know what I'm saying? They get uncomfortable. They realize, oh shit, I can't be a fucking bum. And they fucking change. And that's very unfortunate. But to be honest, I'm a really big believer that, and I've seen this in my life firsthand, where like, I know people that they look like they're about to make these big drastic changes, right? What happens is, is I call them like, I don't know, three month motivators where they get a new idea or they get something in their life that they're excited about. They do it for three months and they're going hard as fuck. And you're like, oh my God, they're going to do it. And then all of a sudden it gets difficult. And what happens? They cruise, they quit. I mean, that's a lot of people in life. So that's what I'm trying to say is looks are very deceiving too. Like, yes, this new girl might be getting this different version of him, but for a lot of people, you get that same great version at the beginning of every relationship. You really don't know who somebody truly is until they are actually comfortable, right? When they're actually comfortable with you, you're really going to see their motivation level. You're going to see their anxieties. You're going to see their passion. You're going to see their activity. So if somebody's showing you that they're not stepping up for you, my best bet is that they didn't get to a new relationship and just become a drastically different person. Now, they might have changed a little bit. And don't get me wrong, you know, they, people can improve and they can get their shit together. That's, that is true right? And sometimes you need those hardships in order to figure that shit out. But again, in my history or in my experience, a lot of people that are like that, they, again, are, are, they will burn out. 
You know what I'm saying? Like they they churn and they burn. They they get uncomfortable for a little while and then they go back to their shell, right? They get the girl and then what happens? The girl starts taking care of everything else and he's right back to where he was. We tend to attract the same types of partners over and over as well. So that's what I'm trying to tell you is like, let that be her problem. That's her lesson that she needs to learn. Uh, and she also asked, if a guy is highly motivated, will he want you helping him to achieve his goals if he does care about you? You know, this is a tricky one as well. And I would say the short answer to that is yes, right? Like, I think I would love for my woman to support me in the things that I'm doing, right? I, I, to me, honestly, and but here's, the, here's where it gets weird. Because sometimes, like, there is a really large part of my life, and Jay can, you know, tell you guys this, but, like, what I would tell him is this. I was like, oh, bro, I need a girlfriend. I need a girlfriend because a girlfriend will help me. <laughs> I'm like, a girlfriend will help me. Like, she'll help me with the camera. She'll do some laundry and shit. Like, my life will be easier. Like, I need that. I want that. But the only issue with that becomes is, is if that is the purpose that you were dating for, like, it's not sometimes very genuine. And then sometimes what will happen is, is like for me, right? I, I think I've attracted a lot of pleasers because of that, right? I, I've attracted a lot of women that, you know, do all these things for me, right? They're helping me out all the time. And then sometimes I end up taking it for granted. So to me, there's a balance. And I think that's the really tricky part, right? So when you meet a highly motivated man, I think there is a balance. Like, yes, do they want that support? Yes. Am I gonna be with a girl that's not gonna be helpful and not gonna, you know, want to you know, do her part and help me out. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to date you. I'm, I'm not doing that. Right. Cause I do want that partnership, but what you need also matters. And that is the biggest thing is like, you can't neglect the things that matter to you. So if there are things that you feel like you're not getting, there needs to be good boundaries. You, you need to make sure that your needs are also getting met in that dynamic because very easily you can get caught up in wanting to be this dependent man. Uh, I'm sorry. You can be caught up being this dependent woman and next thing you know, you're in this situation where you're dealing with somebody who's not really treasuring you and valuing you. That's a very tricky thing about, I would say, even like this traditional dynamic that I think some people really want in life where, and I think for me too, where I do really want to be the provider for my family. It would be great if I could support the entire family and her not have to work if she doesn't want to. Now, again, though, I don't know if I'm really going to end up with a girl that's purely dependent though. To be honest, because I actually, I think I really do value a go-getter and I do really want somebody that's smart and getting after it and doing their own thing too. So I need that balance of independence personally. But again, the, the trouble and the trickiness with that dynamic is if you're in this mode where you're constantly supporting that highly motivated man and you're not getting your needs met, it's a, it's such a weird line. It's such a fine balance. And, and that's what I'm trying to say is like, you got to make sure that you are speaking up for yourself and letting him know that, you know, some shit doesn't fly or that there's some days you can't get to shit or that there's got to be some times where he also helps you out, right? Again, there has to be that evenness to it in some way. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, it, it's again, it's a little hard because I would say, yes, the answer is yes. We definitely want you to support us and help us. But on the other end, it's like, yo, very quickly, you could be taken for granted and taken advantage of. All right, so let's talk about, you know, recently, uh, you know, last week I made the Very Vulnerable podcast and, you know, I was talking about how for the last like two and a half months, you know, I haven't been feeling right. And, you know, it's really weird when I look back at it right now and reflect a little bit, I was like, damn, like you could have the strongest mindset in the world. You can know all the materials you can study this shit like I do. You know what I'm saying? I read every day. But yo, when feelings get involved with somebody, and, and no matter the the circumstance of it, like, bro, it, it just takes time. It just takes time to, to get back to yourself. That's the truth. And it, it's great. Like, after I had that vulnerable podcast last week and I had that phone conversation, yo, I today I was journaling and I was like, wow. This is what it's like to like live in the present again. It was, it was jarring. Like, you know, when I'm journaling, I was like, you know, I'm hearing the sounds of the coffee shop and I, I could just smell, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about my senses. I'm like, oh, these girls are next to me. They're having this conversation. But my journals did not look like that for the last two and a half months. You know what I'm saying? Like my feelings and my thoughts constantly were ruminating about the situation. 
And it's crazy. It's like, again, you could try to control your feelings and emotions in that way. But the truth is, is like, if you get hurt by somebody or, or something, yo, again, I, I think it just takes time. And, and it, it definitely takes releasing any anxiety you have, right? So I think that was the biggest thing too, is I recognized, I was like, I was holding on to all that uncertainty. And, and that's what really killed me. And now that I have the certainty, I'm like, whoa, holy fuck. Like, I'm actually feeling like I'm healed. Like, I actually feel really good. Like the last, I want to say week, I've really been in the present. Like I've been able to work. I've been able to read. I've been able to like get up, enjoy the sunshine, do what I want, accept myself, just enjoy the vibes. It's like crazy how, how much has shifted since like, you know, letting all that stuff out. Like I've been a one, like putting out content, not caring about the results. It's been fantastic. But my, I guess my point is, is like when you're going through a hard time, like it's really tough because sometimes you don't know where that end is really going to be, right? Where's the light at the end of the tunnel? And I guess what I'm also saying too is like, you know, it's just sometimes you can't force that. You can't force yourself to feel better. I I tried everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I tried everything. I read every fucking book. I was healing. I was learning. I was doing so much shit to try to just like move past those feelings. And, you know, sometimes, again, the the best healer is kind of just time. And I guess anybody that's going through a tough time, right, you know, through a breakup or whatever it is, it's just like, just buckle in. You know what I'm saying? Just bear the weight. And also, if you have anything to get off your chest, get it off your chest. Say what you need to say. No uncertainty anymore. I, I, I told you guys this. It's all about vulnerability. And I think that's why I really have felt so good is I have just been letting it the fuck out. I do not care anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just like, I'm me. Here the fuck I am. Here's my feelings. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. And it, my my world has shifted. And it's not that I don't have these, sometimes like these negative feelings and thoughts still come up, but it's just way different now. You know, um, I think here's a really cool tip about, you know, if you're having anxiety or fear just in your life. So, you know, when I was trying to get myself back like restarted again, being vulnerable again, posting my videos, enjoying my life again. I think one of the hardest things to do in, you know, re-getting your life back, we're gonna be talking about like how to build like kind of self-love because, you know, we're talking about the hardships of being single. But I think one of the toughest things to do is kind of like getting back into your routine and also like opening yourself up more to people and experiences and things and your purpose and sharing your artwork. Like it's tough. And I think the reason it's so hard is because you're holding on to a lot of fear. And that's what was happening too. So, you know, a little earlier in the week, I remember sitting down and I was writing to myself. I was like, like, I am afraid. I, I am afraid. I'm, a, I'm afraid of, you know, doing this shit alone. I'm, I'm afraid of putting my artwork out there and the criticism that comes with it. I'm afraid that I won't be successful. I'm afraid that, you know... I don't know, like, what if I don't make enough, right? What if I don't get to the next step that I want to get to, right? Like, because that's really what it all is. It's it's just like this fear that just creeps up on you. And again, when you're going through, again, a hard time and then you're single, no one else has your back besides you. When you're alone, you got to be your own best friend. You got to be the person that gets your mindset on track. But here's what I found is like, it's all about being honest with yourself, Right. That's, that's what I guess I was trying to say right now is like, I feel like when I'm, when I was writing that and I was journaling, I was just being honest and real with myself about my feelings. I was just like, yeah, I am scared to do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? I am scared to just like move on and try to do this alone and try to be on my own and try to share the things I want to share. Because when you have a person in your corner, what I recognize is like that support almost gives you your self-confidence. It gives you your self-acceptance, right? When I had a girl in my corner, I could just go to her and be like, hey, what do you think about this video? Or hey, you know, I don't feel really good right now. And what does that person do? That person what? Gives you that support. Hey, no, you're great. Don't worry about it. I love you. I'm here for you. You, you won't fail. You're going to be okay. Now, the really hard part is, is when you're alone, you don't have somebody in your ear telling you that. And I think that's one of the biggest skills or the biggest muscles I'm, I feel like I'm learning to try to really restore within myself is like being that supportive person to myself, right? So when I'm journaling, I'm being honest with myself, right? And I'm saying, 
hey, I am scared of this. Hey, you know, it is really, you know, it's kind of hard right now. I feel a little bit of fear when it comes to my work. And then by the end of the journal, I'm like, don't worry. You're like, that's okay. You feel the fear and still fucking do it. You can do this shit. It's okay. You're not going to go, you're not going to die. You've been successful before. You got this shit. And the conversation you have with yourself is so fucking important. And I guess that's what I'm trying to tell you about. Again, if you're feeling this way, um, or I, I guess for me, like getting myself back engaged into my life is like, I just got to get started. I just got to push through that fear. I just got to start building that, you know, inner dialogue that's really fucking strong and healthy. And I'm telling you, this week has been amazing. And that's what I'm trying to tell you is like, it's not amazing because every day has just been amazing where I haven't had fearful thoughts. It's every day is really fucking good. I wake up, yo, I navigate some uncomfortable feelings and thoughts sometimes still, right? Every single day, there's there's a time in my day, I, I would say once a day, where like I'll get anxiety and I'll be like, ah, fuck, like, you know, did that video do well? Ah, you know. What's, what's going on right now? Hey, you know, I am alone. Oh, it's tough. But it's just a lot different when you can remind yourself and have that inner dialogue about, yo, you got this shit. It's, it's having that confidence and that belief that everything is going to work out for you no matter what. But you got to do that for yourself. And the problem is for a lot of people is we've always relied on other people for that. I think that's the biggest thing about being single that's the hardest is, again, having that self-acceptance, that self-confidence within yourself without somebody else telling you that. And I think we're all just so used to that, right? Think about the ways that we have grown up. Like as a kid, you know, you don't really know what's right and wrong, what's good or bad. And throughout life, you kind of rely on your caregivers and your peers to kind of give you your value, right? And this is why we always like, you know, I think even are reaching for the approval of some partners in our life, right? If you really want to take it there. It's because, you know, throughout our lives, we're constantly looking externally for approval all the time. And, and that's the thing is like when you're actually alone, that's why I think it's so hard, is that you have nobody giving you approval and you have to be the one to give it to yourself and that's very confusing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what do you mean I gotta tell myself it's okay? Like, how do I live for my own approval? You know what I'm saying? Like, I care, of course you care about relationships and it's deeper than that. You need support and help. It's not, I'm not saying you can't have people in your life and we're gonna talk about that. But I guess my point is, if you could really strengthen that relationship that you have with yourself in terms of that inner dialogue, like how would you speak to your best friend? How would you speak to your partner? You got to think about that. Like think about the love that you have given previous partners in your life, right? You know, even when they were down, isn't it so much easier to see from the outside the value of somebody and like how great they are? I look at some of my best friends and like, you know, I'll use my friend Jay as an example because I love him. Like, he doesn't realize how fucking smart he is. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't realize how fucking tremendous he is. When he puts his mind to some shit, he's unstoppable. He's amazing. And I could tell that in his own inner dialogue that I know for him, he struggles sometimes with that. Sometimes he can't see his own value. And that is the power of having friendship and people in your life because you do need people to remind you of that. It isn't To me, it is impossible to only get your value from yourself. I don't believe that. That's bullshit. But having that strong and that strength to have that inner dialogue and use it when you need to and then rely on people and friends when you need to, that's the strength. That's how you get there as a single person, right? Is building those strong relationships. Can So just in case you do need that lifeline, you do have somebody to call and tell you, yo, you're fucking good, dog. You know, get your shit together. You are the man. You are the shit. You are him. But I will say this. You also have to have the other side which is when you are alone and you're sitting in your living room and no one's there or you're in your bed at night and you got nobody answer to and you're scrolling on your phone aimlessly and you're feeling a little anxious about yourself, you're anxious about your next day, anxious about your work, anxious about something, whatever it is. There needs to be that inner dialogue of like, yo, <laughs> you're good. You are good. Because we don't see our own value very well. We're, we're our own worst critic. That is a fact. That is a fact. 
we fucking suck at self-acceptance within ourselves. And that to me, that's what I'm trying to say. That is the secret sauce. The secret sauce is being able to be like, I am good. You know what I'm saying? No, actually, I do got this shit. I do have that confidence. And you do need to build certain habits in order to give yourself that. So let me get into some of the hardships about being single because there's a lot here I want to talk about. And I don't want to get too far away from some of the things that you guys said. So one of the first things you guys said as the hardest part about being single was sleeping alone. And now I hear you on that. I, you know, honestly, even in my you know, relationship, whatever the fuck that was, I was still sleeping alone every day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe I'm a little bit used to it. But sleeping alone is fucking hard. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? It really is difficult when you, day after day after day after day, that you don't have somebody there with you. Like, that shit's difficult. I, you know, I was going to say this shit. You know, honestly, this is truly how I feel. But, like, to be honest, sometimes I really don't even miss sex. Like, I just miss cuddling with somebody. Truly. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yo, sex is cool. But to me, cuddling's where it's at. Like, just having somebody to hold while you go to sleep, there's no better feeling in the world. There really is not. That's so fucking nice. And not to, like, you know, <laughs> make this worse than what it is, right? I know you're struggling sleeping alone. But, you know, one, you know a really cool technique that I actually, whenever I feel that way at night sometimes, this is what I do. I get my king-size pillow. I fucking hold it like a koala. You know what I'm saying? I sleep cuddled with my pillows. I have a lot of pillows. So here's the thing. If you're sleeping alone, get a lot of pillows. It's going to feel like people are there. Uh, but I actually cuddle my king-size pillow. And I literally, sometimes, like, I swear to God, I'll say this, be like, I love you, Chris. Good night. And I'll kiss the pillow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to do something cute like that for yourself. Like, sometimes you just got to remind yourself. And this is back to, like, the self-love piece. Again, the inner dialogue is so critical. We're going to be talking about that a lot here. But, you know, when you're sleeping alone, just, like, try to, like, love it. You know what I'm saying? Try to just enjoy it like be like yo this is kind of cool like you know yeah it's me alone but what's wrong with just me you know what's wrong with just being able to sleep with myself like if you can get comfortable with that you could accomplish a lot of great things in life you know what i'm saying because if that's the thing that's holding you back or getting you into its shitty companionships or, or getting you to sleep with people or be around people that you don't want to be around think about how enormous of a waste of time that is imagine if you just had the inner strength to just be like no actually i do enjoy this like we just got to shift the belief around it you know what i'm saying it's like why can't you enjoy sleeping alone it's nice i got a big bed sometimes i'll go right in the middle of the bed i'll sprawl out you know what i'm saying like it's kind of nice it really is nice and then you kind of just get used to it and to me, I honestly, I, I kind of enjoy it. I really don't mind sleeping alone anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just moments like, yeah, of course, I would, again, I would love to have somebody next to me, but you got to try to maybe build a better sleeping practice with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, really make your, your bed, your space, like, make your bed, like, you know, really try to make that environment, um, how to say, like a very loving one. And again, the inner dialogue, so critical. Like, cuddle with yourself. I literally said, I'm not joking. Like I'll literally hug myself a little bit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'll put my, sh my hands around my own shoulders, right? Cause I'm, c I'm cuddling the pillow and then cuddling myself. And then I'm making believe like I'm like hugging myself. I know it sounds fucking strange, but I'm telling you, try it tonight and see how you sleep. Uh, and I think it'll do you re really good. And the other thing too is, uh, you know, no, no phones when you say, who am I? What am I? Your fucking dad. <laughs> No phones when you're in your bedroom. No, I honestly, I, I, I find it better. Like I sleep better uh, when I read before I sleep because you don't have the light in your eyes. It's really bad for you, actually. I, listen, I'm not a fucking scientist, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I, do what you want. My whole point is I think you'll get a lot of good sleep and you'll start enjoying sleep more uh, if you just have some better boundaries around your sleep and go to sleep a little bit earlier too. Oh shit, wow. Turn it into my mom really fucking quick. All right, uh, here's the big one, right? Uh, this is, I, I saw numerous times, uh, just general loneliness, desire for support, and just missing the companionship and missing the intimacy. I, I mean, this is just really single dumb in general, right? That's just the hard part. The truth is, it is nice when you really do have somebody in your life. It is nice. When you have a great partner, 
That's fucking awesome. I was watching this video today. Uh, you know that guy that like runs up to people on the street and he like asks people like, you know, these really like rich people. He'll like run up to them like, hey, like how'd you make your money and all this shit. Uh, I watched this interview today and it was really powerful. First off, the guy said nothing of value uh, in the actual questions itself. It was like, how do you scale the business? And like, you know, it's like, I don't know, just work hard. You know what I'm saying? Be a good team player. You know, it's all like basic ass answers. But the last question was fucking awesome. Uh, he was like, I don't remember what it really was. Um, but, but again, he said he sold his company for $70 million. And I was like, whoa, that's fucking crazy. Like that seems like a big accomplishment. Uh, but you know, at one point he's like, I gotta go. Uh, and he's like, the most important thing to me is standing right there. And it was his wife and his kid. And I was like, oh shit. Like, you know, he figured it out. Cause I was like, this guy has made a fuck ton of money in his life. And the only thing that I, it, it looked like he, va like he honest, I swear to God, it just seemed like he did not give a shit about business and, and about money. It was just like, dude, like leave me alone. Like I got the most important thing in front of me right here. And I was like, damn, that's real as fuck. Like that's real as fuck. And that's something that I'm recognizing about myself. Like, you guys have seen this transformation kind of live where it's like, I think I recognize that now more than anything else too. Like, yeah, the success is cool as fuck, but I really feel like having a family, like that to me is it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the goal. It really is. Like being able to like be with your person all the time is fucking awesome. Like I'm not going to discount this, this hardship about being single. Like this shit is real. It is hard to not have a partner. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that tells you that that's stupid, they're wrong. That's, that's, that's wrong. You know, that is very valid to, to want that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but on the other side of the coin is this is, you know, sometimes life is a little uncomfortable and I, I will say this, like you really have to navigate those fucking moments in life. And like, that's just part of it. Like even in a relationship, it's going to be uncomfortable sometimes too. And, and I, and I just don't want that to get lost in all of this. I know that's the hardest part, but to me, that is probably the heaviest cost or the hardest hardship you really have to deal with while being single. But to me, to say that your life single is not as good as when you're in a relationship, to me, that's where it gets a little tricky. To me, that means you're valuing the relationship too much to your happiness. Because again, I, I, I think in both aspects of life, you're going to experience uncomfortability. Like there's a lot of pros to being on your own. You know, being able to navigate and do whatever the fuck you want, have that freedom. Your time is all for you. It is very nice. There are a lot of pros. And, and I understand, again, we're missing that companionship and that intimacy and it would feel so good. But like, here's what I was thinking about today. I was like, yes, I want that family. But think about this. As soon as you get that family, as soon as you find that forever person, I, you know, ideally I would say, I mean that's a really long time that you're going to be with somebody. Think about how much you're missing out on in your own single life if you don't begin to enjoy your own company and just the freedom that you do have right now. You get what I'm saying? It's like, for me, it's like, I know that that person is coming. I know I'm going to meet my wife. I know I'm going to have kids. Those are things I know that are going to come to me at the right time uh, when they're supposed to. But I feel like, how incredible of it is it an opportunity for me to just be on my own and to love just what I'm doing and love myself and, and build that intimacy within myself. I'm like, wow, that's fucking fascinating. Like that's, that's really enjoyable too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I have all this time, the rest of my life to be exploring my wife and my kid and whatever. And again, to me, it's really glorified as being this like, oh my God, the, the safe haven, right? This is what life is supposed to be. But like, you know, I know people that I know that are like, you know, young 30s that have a kid that I look at their life sometimes and I'm like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like, would I want to be staying up till 3 a.m. taking care of a one-year-old every day while I'm like in my youth right now? Like, sometimes I'm like, mm. like, again, a lot of value to that if you find the right person. But on the other side of the coin, it's like, why am I, why are you being so hard on yourself about being single when you have this fucking amazing opportunity in front of you to just enjoy the fuck out of your life. 
Like be intimate with yourself. Be intimate with the things that you want to do. Build some strong friendships. Travel. You know what I'm saying? There's so many fucking opportunities that you have right now as a single person that you literally do not have when you are in a relationship. The freedom to go up and walk and talk to a random girl that's beautiful. Yo, the amount of like beautiful women I see on a weekly basis, like sometimes I think about that. I'm like, again, not that I need the quantity, but it's something that's exciting about like just the thrill of being able to talk to just a random stranger and a random person. And again, if I had a wife, think about that. Like that goes away. Like I can't just go flirt with a random stranger, like, you know, break into something new. You can't. And again, there's seasons for everything in life, right? So my whole point is though, is like, we get so down and hard on ourselves about not having that. But I'm like, I think you're missing a very big opportunity in front of you to really enjoy yourself. You know what I'm saying? To really have fun and to do all the things that you really want to do and explore. And like, you're going to find people. I mean, that's the other thing too about being single, right? It's like, you can't be a slouch and be single because yeah, you are going to be fucking miserable. If you're somebody that is, you know, it just wants the comfort and just wants the, the easy life and the lazy life. Yeah. Maybe a fucking relationship probably is better, I guess. Cause then you don't have to do shit, but that's the thing too. It's like, yo, as a single person, you could make your life exciting. Like you could have a fucking thrilling, fun life if you really choose to create it that way. But again, it's all the way that you perceive things. You know what I'm saying? It's all the way that you're looking at your own life and saying, okay, how do I want to live it? Because there are opportunities for you to get involved and to meet people and to have connection that's not just, again, a relationship. To me, that, yes, is that the token to nice, easy companionship, intimacy? Yeah, it is. But you could build connection, intimacy, and all those things with friends. You could. And family. But you got to be willing to do that. You got to be willing to put yourself out there and see the value in those relationships and make that stuff happen. You got to take the risks. You got to stop playing small. But again, it's very easy to play small and to not feel good and to not live a fucking vibrant ass life because you don't have somebody telling you that you can do that. Hopefully I'm telling you that. (laughs) But you get what I'm saying? It's like, how about tell yourself that? How about be your own best friend? Like look at your own life and be like, yo, how can I make this life doper? You know, because that's, that's the key to self-love is like, look at yourself, take an honest inventory about what things are bothering you, what things you want to improve on and get to work and not even just get to work, have fucking fun, do it. If you want to travel and no one wants to do it with you, do it by yourself. Go meet people, go do the uncomfortable things. Because that's what's actually holding you back and making you feel like shit is is your lack of desire to get yourself uncomfortable. Because, again, being single is hard, but it's no excuse for living a shitty life and to not create peace on your own. So that's my two cents on the whole loneliness thing. You know, that's just the cost. That's the cost of having this freedom. You know what I'm saying? To do what you want to do. And again, I'm not saying don't be in a relationship. I'm just saying, why can't we value being single and having our freedom equally to having a wife and kids and a committed relationship? To me, they're equally as awesome. To me, they're equally as fun. To me, they're equally different things. It's like, let me ask you. Yes, summer is a lot of fun. And yes, for a lot of people, winter is kind of boring. But there's so much shit that you can do in winter that you can't do in summer. And that's the way I look at it. It's like, it's just two different seasons of your life, spring and fall, summer and winter. You know what I'm saying? Football season and baseball season. They both, yes, they have different qualities. And yes, maybe there's certain things that you like about one than the other, but why can't you have just as much fun and be in the present just as much in your single life as you do in your relationship life? And I think I feel like there's just a mindset shift. You know what I'm saying? It's a choice that you're making to feel miserable and to think to yourself that a relationship is saving you. Uh, somebody wrote lack of sex. Oh, boy. Yeah, one's a tough one. I haven't been fucking at all. You know what I'm saying? I just made a video uh, talking about how I haven't banged since May. I'll be honest with you. That, that one's fucking hard because the self-pleasure gets weird. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know what I'm saying? I'm nutting in my shower every like, you know, couple days. I don't really do it as much as I used to. I'm not like the young buck I used to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm the old bull now. You know, every once in a while I get a little, <laughs> I get a little like, woo. 
But at the same time too, it's like, yeah, it would be nice. Like, yeah, there's definitely people I look at and I'm like, yes, I, I would like to have sex with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be nice if just randomly we both got naked and just started fucking right here. Like, <laughs> like that would be pretty sick. Like, don't get me wrong. That would be sick. Uh, but again, this is, we, we just talked about like kind of paying a cost and how like sometimes life is a little uncomfortable. To me, this is just one of those things. Like, yes, sex is nice. But to me, sex is not a necessity. It's not a necessity. I haven't banged in a while. Like, yes, I miss it, but I got other things that I value more than that, right? You know, like I do want to find a, a really great relationship. Now, again, if I meet somebody and sex is on the table and let's say hypothetically, I don't really want to date them and I tell them straight up and I'm like, hey, just like integrity's sake, like I just want to fuck and they're down to just fuck. I'm probably down for that, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's cool. I can get my nut and maybe we have a good vibe and we have a good time physically. But for the most part, it's like the other problem with that is, is, again, what other things do I value in my life outside of sex? When people like I coach people, right? And they're like, oh, you know, I just I just like the sex. But I'm like, OK, but what do you value more? Right. Like, do you value an intimate connection? Do you value commitment? Because if you value those things, guess what? You know, like you have to make a choice. In life, you know, the greatest things in life, they take sacrifice and it takes delayed gratification. And, and sex is one of those things. It's like, if you really want a dope committed relationship, and, and honestly, I, I'm just going to speak to my women specifically on this because to be honest, I really do feel y'all hold the access to that. Let's be real. Y'all hold the access to sex. If you want something committed and deeper and, and it, you know, you're struggling, you're like, but I really like sex. I'm like, well, you, you got to find a way to decide what's more important to you. Because to me, the way that you're going to create a better relationship is by leading with friendship is by leading with the idea that you want something committed and not settling for just sex. And when sex gets involved, you get easily attached and then you're in a toxic, messy situation. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of like people like, Oh, I miss sex. I'm like, well, yeah, I, I miss fucking Doritos, but I also like being jacked. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm yeah, I miss donuts and ice cream. Yeah. Those, those are fun. But again, there's a cost. There's a cost to, to, to getting the finer things in life right? If you really want, again, a great relationship or uh, again, just really nice things, uh, you know, think about money. If you want money, what are you going to have to do? Well, I really like hanging out with my friends. Yeah, so do I, <laughs> but I got to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what we're talking about. It's like, yes, these things are, are great, but you really got to ask yourself what, what matters more to me? What do I really value? right? Because if I really value an intimate, deep connection, maybe I got to forego just having bullshit sex or even for a money purpose. Honestly, this sounds crazy, but if you're going to make some fucking moolah, how much can you be having a lot of casual sex? Is that really leading you somewhere great or is it just a short-term pleasure? Especially if it's casual and especially if it's with somebody you don't really care about. To me, that's conversation wasted. That's time wasted. Now, if, if it's like a good vibe, good conversation, we have a good fuck sesh, good, you know, good energy. And it's like every once in a while, that to me sounds sustainable. That to me sounds nice. That to me sounds like balance. But again, this is all just about making good choices for yourself. And again, there's nothing right or wrong. If you really value just sex, all right, go fuck around. Go start an OnlyFans, make some fucking money, become a hooker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? You know, live it up. Do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You, everybody's got a choice. You, you got a choice on what you want. And, and, and no one's here to tell you what's right or wrong. You got to determine that for yourself. Uh, okay, someone said, and, and I think this is another tough part of be, uh, being single, is the fear of having really high standards and not settling and the fear of not finding somebody. So I think what happens for a lot of single people is they're like, you know, hey, I've been single for a little bit. I have these standards that I want to uphold. I'm really looking for this certain type of partner. But at the same time, it's like, am I being too strict? Am I being too picky? Right? Like, am I not just letting somebody in because connection would be really nice? And I think that's very tricky balance for everybody. I mean, for me, I fight that all the time because I have a very perfectionist mindset and sometimes I might not be so forgiving in relationships. I might not let people in very much. So I understand this one a lot. But again, to me, this comes down to, again, do we know what it is that we value and do we believe that we can receive it? I I'm a really big believer that you can't be flexible on what you want. I really, I, I don't believe in that. You can't be flexible on your boundaries. Because as soon as you start to give up the things that you truly care about, 
is the day you start feeling that resentment and you get yourself into a relationship that is not really fulfilling for you and is not sustainable over the long run. The, the truth of this is this. There's no shortcuts in life. If you know that there's something within that relationship that you don't love or it's a non-negotiable and you proceed forward, you're selling yourself short. Or what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for a later failure. You know what I'm saying? You're setting yourself up for something worse uh, or, you know, or just bullshit happening down the line. So if you're in this position, right, I think the best way to get over this fear and you're kind of being stuck in the middle is being very honest with yourself exactly about what you want and also making sure that that list is not ridiculous, right? So that's the other key behind it. It's like, I think I have like five or six non-negotiables. That's it, right? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Do I have a lot of other wants and do not wants and needs? Yeah, I do. But generally I've got like six. I'm like, okay, impeccability of word. She's got to be a go-getter, right? Like, you know, I got to find her attractive. Uh, she's got to be able to take accountability, have emotional intelligence. But you know what I'm saying? Keep it short. Okay, that's good, right? Like, good banter. All right. I need these things. And here's the thing. I've met people in my life where I feel like they've they've managed that list, you know? Make it so that, okay, you know, there. now, again, if she's blonde or brunette, she doesn't, it doesn't matter. Is she tall or short? It doesn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? right? Is she skinny or is she thick? I don't really care. As long as I'm attracted to her and she's got the rest of the qualities, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you got to really decide. And again, get really smart on your values, get really smart on the things that you care about. Because if you're sitting in that, like, oh, I don't know if I'm being too picky or if I'm not, I'm like, you probably just aren't really smart enough on what you truly value. You, you don't really have a very nice short list of things that you really care about. But the other part of it too is I don't believe in settling. I really don't. I don't believe on being too flexible with what it is that we care about and what we really want our relationships. I want intimacy. I want closeness. I'm not, I'm not backing down on that. You know what I'm saying? I could find a partner that's going to be supportive and show up for me and be vulnerable with me. It's going to require those things from me. And that's the other thing too is like, I hope that you're also being vulnerable and sharing yourself and not, a like not letting the fear of getting hurt stop you. Uh, but ultimately you really just have to have that belief that it is coming. Cause I really, I am such a big believer that anything I've ever wanted in my life. Now here's the, the trick. The trick is patience, uh, navigating the uncomfortable. What we're talking about right now, this season of your life, it is what it is. I actually wrote down recently. Uh, I was like, if I don't meet my partner for a year, two years, so be it. So be it. I know that's very scary for a lot of y'all or to even like maybe even think about that, but think about that. If, if it really wasn't coming for a year or two years, are you going to be okay? Can you find happiness within yourself and in your own life? Now, again, to me, that's a very long time, right? And the reason I put it out that far is because I feel like that really puts my mind at ease a little bit where it's just like, okay, if I could believe that, right, if I could believe that my partner is going to come to me in a year or two years, how would I act right now? I'd probably be more free. I'd probably just like let go of it. I'd probably be like, all right, cool. Like if it happens, it happens. And then in the meantime, what do I get to do? I get to just enjoy myself. It really might take that long for you to find a great person. Now, in my experience, I feel like I've met like a, a pretty solid partner about every six months. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I would say on average, like, yeah, I, I talk to people in between and I like people and I uh, go on a date here or there. But like somebody I really like, like once or twice a year, it takes, you know, it, it does take a little bit of time for you to find good people. It does. Uh, but you just got to trust that. You just got to trust that. And here's the best part, right? So let's say I, I say, okay, it's going to come to me in a year or two. Think about how much growth that can happen for you in that time. Think about how well you could take care of yourself. Get more financial security. Do something for your purpose. Do something really cool, right? With, with your artwork. You know, just build yourself up. Be smarter. Be healthier. Work on your boundaries. Work on the things that you value and you care about. Because to me, what's really happening in that time that you're not meeting that partner you're just setting yourself up for a better partner or more a, a, a bigger likelihood to receive that partner if you're doing the work and if you're at peace. So that's a big if though too, right? If I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like crap 
and I'm just telling myself, oh, I need a partner to be happy and, I don't, and I'm not happy and I'm not happy and this is too hard and I'm anxious and blah, 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 blah. And that's how every day is going to look. To be honest, I, I don't think you're going to receive that partner. I really don't. Because you're going to settle for less. You're going to be with somebody that, again, you're just using for your happiness and your validation because you can't do it within yourself and within your own life. And this is why some people can't create sustainable relationships. It's because they're not willing to take that leap within themselves to trust themselves and to believe in themselves. But that's what I'm trying to say is like, you got a choice. We got one life here. Uh, okay, you know, here's a big one. Uh, people said that some of the hardest things, and this is, I'm going to combine these two. Uh, the biological clock for women is a big one, right? Again, feeling like they're on the timeline. We just kind of talked about that a little bit, like how you kind of really can't be on that. And the other thing is the comparison to other people. Let's talk about, actually, let's talk about those separately. So biological clock. Now I'm going to be honest. I mean, number one, if you really freaked out about that, freeze your eggs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's stuff that you could do to, to prevent that, I guess. Uh, but you know, Unfortunately, there's nothing else that you could really do other than, again, what we're just kind of talking about, which is you can't rush it. And that's just the unfortunate part about it. It's like you cannot rush love. It, it is patient because you just don't want to end up with someone just because. Because if you do it just because or you do it because you're just like, well, I just need to and I, and I need to do it now. Think about the partners that you're going to rush into and find. Again, they're not going to be meeting your needs fully. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be settling for a life and something that you really don't want. And to be honest, ask yourself this question. If you're such in a rush to have a family, and I get it, right? Because I understand the desire for that. I just told you guys. It's like, wow, it's like the biggest thing in my life. And I get the biological clock, like clock thing. But imagine having a kid with somebody and in your young 30s or whatever, and you did it because you were just like, well, I just needed to, right? And I just needed to. And then you sleep with some guy that, you know, ultimately you don't really love or he doesn't really love you. Then you end up having his kid. Now you're also a single mom and now you're three or four years behind. And now you're dating again at 35, 36, 37, now with a kid. And I'm not saying that's a bad spot to be in because I think that there's love everywhere for every single person. But my whole point is, I'd prefer you to go slow. I'd prefer you to vet the partner. You're so much better off taking your time and making a great decision on who you want <laughs> to be your baby daddy rather than thinking that you're on a timeline or st sticking around with somebody that's not really good for you. I again, there's no shortcuts. You take the shortcut and you will get fucking burned. And here's the other thing. So comparisons, right? Comparisons are hard. Uh, but I, you know, this is something that I like talk to my coaches about because I hear this all the time where they're like, you know, my friends are in relationships and I see them in relationships and it's just really hard for me. You know, sometimes I ask them this question. I'm like, okay, so the relationships that are around you, how many of them are role, role model relationships for you? How many of the guys that they are with would you date personally? And like sometimes they'll like think back to like, hmm, I don't know, not all of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, hmm. I don't know about that. Actually, their relationship is a little sus. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't really know. And see, this is where comparison gets interesting. Like, yes, there's definitely people that have great relationships. And the other part is, you know, you want to be inspired by that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be jealous of that. You want to be inspired by that. Wow, th they have a great connection. That means that, whoa, great connection is out there right? Why am I going to settle for something that's less when there are people that fucking have that? But the flip side of the coin is when we compare ourselves to a lot of these relationships, we don't know what the fuck is going on inside their relationship. We see the shit on social media and they're posting how fucking great everything is, but you already know what time it is. I can't tell you how many of my friends have relationships where I know what the fuck is going on behind closed doors. I know the, the acceptance over the bullshit that they're dealing with. But online, they're like, oh, well, we're out to dinner. Happy birthday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The love of my life. And it's like, homie, like, fucking cheated on her twice. <laughs> That's fucked up. But you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you have no idea what you're comparing yourself to. And that's the thing is, like, you got to be on your own journey. We kind of just talked about before, too, like, how, like, you have to treasure this single time of your life. Like, you are going to meet your person. You are. You got to believe that. You got to have faith that you're going to see that. But again, when you compare yourself, 
If you see a great role model relationship, use it as inspiration. Tell yourself, wow, that's like me with like other creators that are huge. I'm like, I can sit there and be jealous and think to myself how much like I'm lacking. Oh, look at my numbers. Look at my followers. I'm not as good as them. I'm not as wealthy as them. But think about the state of mind that puts you in. That's sour. That doesn't help you receive love. You know what I'm saying? That closes you off to love. That makes you cold. You know what I'm saying? That makes you a person people don't want to be around because you're, you're, you're jealous. And here's the thing. When you notice it, just flip it. Just, just give it love. Just turn it around and say, actually, I'm happy for them that they found that. Yeah, I, I am going to find that one day. But actually, the fact that I have the freedom to do what I want right now and they have to deal with a kid, fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look at the, have gratitude for the opportunity that you have in your life. That you have the ability to work on yourself. And here's the other thing too. I find that a lot of people that compare themselves to other relationships are usually actually people that have a high focus on self-development or they really want this great relationship or they want this like deep love. They want this deep commitment. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm happy that you want that. But you also need to understand something. The reason that you're single is because you haven't settled. It's because you do want something great. And everything great in life takes time. It takes time to build. It takes time to find great individuals that are ready to commit on a deep level and also are motivated, ambitious, and beautiful. They're not everywhere. It's going to take some time for you to find that person. But trust your process. You know what I'm saying? Don't look over the side wall and be like, oh, I wish I had what they had. Now, you could use it as inspiration and say, hey, I, I want a relationship like that where they're like friends and they hang out with themselves. But you want something deeper. You want something more. If you want the finer things in life, you just got to buckle in. And guess what? This is what I'm talking about. You got to understand it. Sometimes it is going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes you are going to look at stuff like that and wish you kind of had that. But you can't be in that mindset. You got to know intentionally that that shit is coming for you. And you got to believe and you got to work at it. And you work at it by working on your boundaries, understanding what you value, loving yourself deeply, using those connections as inspiration, not fucking around with people that are taking you off your path of finding something great. Because you will receive it if you can lay into that. But you got to watch the comparisons because again, you have no idea what the fuck is going on. And again, the sad part is, is you could be using it in a positive way and not in a negative way. And again, uh, great relationships in life, let's be honest, like in my life personally, how many do I know? One, maybe three? Like a great relationship is just as rare as making $400,000, in my opinion. And both take an equal amount of discipline, work, energy, all of that. So you got to remind yourself of that, is that the greatest things in life, they take time. And if you really want something great, guess what? Buckle up. It's uncomfortable sometimes. Get a grip. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's where you have to like look at yourself in the mirror and be like, yeah, this is part of it. This is part of the journey. You know what I'm saying? In order to receive those great things, I gotta I gotta be patient. I gotta endure some uncomfortable times. I gotta stay persistent on what my goal is. I can't settle for less. All right. Uh the other, the last one was, is the, the person said the hardest thing for her being single and something I wanted to talk about, and, and I've been talking about this throughout the podcast, was how to love themselves. And I touched upon this earlier. It, this is, to me, is the core of self-love. Understand who you are and understand what you need. That's the core of self-love. Understand who you are and understand what you need and create fucking boundaries around that. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. So if you want to know how to love yourself, again, you got to go in. You got to go internal. What are the things that you care about? What do you really want from your life, right? And that's the thing too. It's like, let's say you really want connection. Let's say your need is love. There are so many ways to get love outside of a relationship. There are. I understand the romantic connection is the intention and you could set the intention. But this is where you got to be really fucking honest with yourself about, how do I receive these things? How do I give these things to myself? How can I connect with myself really deeply? And again, we're talking about, okay, if we want connection, you know, okay, yes, we have to work on our friendships. We have to take some fucking risks, right? If you know that you need connection and you want people in your life, this is where you got to create a plan for yourself and get to work and get uncomfortable. 
you got to join the fucking run club. I don't even want to fucking run. I'm not joining a run club. But <laughs> for you, you know what I'm saying? Join the run club. You got to get outside of your house. You got to do these things for yourself. I mean, for me, this is how I've built my own version of self-love is just loving all the little things I do every single day and accepting all the th all the feelings and all the things that just go through my mind every day. All the fears, and we talked about it earlier, it's like accepting those things for what they are and just learning to love them. And so I guess for me, a, a, a self-love day, or just, I would call it my regular day now, it looks like wake up. And guess what? I allow myself to wake up at whatever time I want now. You know what I'm saying? If it's a little bit late, whatever. If it's a little bit early, that's okay too. You see how I'm just like, it doesn't matter. It's okay, right? I get up. I go out for some sunshine. I just walk. No thoughts. Just walk. Sunshine's nice. Come back home. Eat a healthy breakfast. That makes me feel really good. Nourish my body with something really nice. You know what? I'll sit on, I'll scroll on my phone a little bit, but what do I want to do? I, I like connectivity. I like interaction. My job, unfortunately, I don't have social interaction. If I sat in my house every single day for the rest of my life, I wouldn't have to interact with another human being. So what do I do? I take a shower. I look presentable, and I go to a coffee shop every day, every day. You know what I'm saying? Every day I do that because it makes me feel good. It's worth the $7 coffee to me to sit somewhere where there's people around, and it feels really nice to be connected to people, just be outside, get in my car, put the music on. That feels really fucking nice to me. Driving around, listening to a new song that I really like. I get to the coffee shop, I journal, I understand how I'm feeling that day. What am I thinking about? What do I feel? I read a good book. I, I, I love reading because that shit just makes me feel good. I learn something new. It's an input, right? It's an input to Chris. He learns something new. He, he discovers something new. He learns something about himself. Um, and then once I do that, it's crazy how my mindset feels refreshed. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel good. And then once I do that, then I get into my work a little bit. I do creative work. That feels really good to me. I love creating videos. That feels fucking nice. So what do I do? I go back. I, I edit a video. I create a video. I make a podcast. I edit. I have coaching calls. Those fucking fill my cup up. Now, here's the thing. I think when you're looking at, you know, people listening to this, I what you guys haven't realized is that for a really long time in my life, I have created a life of design from a really long time ago. Like, I used to be in corporate. I, I got my master's degree. I went to school just like you. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been in that position in life where I was working for somebody where I didn't even want to really even be there. But what did I do? I took the steps to try to figure out what it is that I genuinely valued and I believed in myself and I just kept working at it every single day. But my whole point is, is eventually you get to a place in your life where you really do, like my life is completely by design. Ever since I was a kid, I have been the person that helps people with their relationships. It is so natural to me that it just, it, it doesn't even feel like work. You know what I'm saying? I could be on five phone calls in a day and I don't get tired. I really don't. That shit energizes me. I only do things in my life predominantly that bring me joy. There's not many things in my life that don't bring me joy that I, that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've created it that way. But so you want to learn how to love yourself, again, figure out what you genuinely care about. Figure out what you fucking really like to do. If you really like being by the ocean, go live by the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Go take a walk on the beach every day, right? If you really like to listen to music, make sure you're putting that shit on in the car every day, right? Even the little things matter, right? Cleaning my house feels good. Having a really nice home feels good. I, and what I did was is I wrote them down as goals. Yo, I want to buy a new SUV. I want to have financial freedom. I want a Savannah cat. That's going to bring me intense joy. I love cats. I know I'm going to get that at some point. So that's something for me, right? right where like I don't have it, but I'm having gratitude because I know I'm going to receive that at some point. But I just know myself deep and really well. And I think that's what you have to do is like, if you want to learn to love yourself it starts by taking some time to really just sit with yourself and learn to enjoy your own company. And that's the other thing too that I think is really tough to do is like, think about all the love. And again, we talked about this earlier. Think about all the love that you give somebody else. Like think about the way that you would talk to somebody that you were in love with. 
Like, what would you tell your partner? Let's say you guys are sitting on the couch and you guys are watching Netflix or something. Think about the feeling that you have. Think about the feeling that you have when you're on the couch with your partner and you guys are just doing nothing, but they're just there. How do you feel? Content, at peace, right? Words don't even have to be said sometimes. It could just be somebody's presence in the room. Now, imagine recreating that feeling, but just with yourself. Every single night, or a lot of nights, I'll sit down after my work, right? I record this podcast. I'll go to the gym. That makes me feel amazing. Yeah, I'm just a healthy habit whore. At the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do, but if you're not taking care of your body, your mind, your soul, your spirituality, I mean, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I, I'm just saying I feel fucking incredible. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but anyways, you know, something to think about if that's, you know, something that's a struggle for you. Uh, but anyways, I get home from the gym and what do I do? I eat a healthy meal, bro. I roll a fucking joint. I roll a spliff. I'll throw some tobacco, throw some fucking weed in that bitch, roll something up, sit on my fucking nice ass couch. I'll smoke some weed and I'll play some Xbox with my friend. Like I'm 13 years old and I fucking love it. And, and I just tell myself, wow, this is nice. This is nice. I get to do what the fuck I want to do. And then I go upstairs, I open up my book, and I read until I fall asleep every single day. And all I did all day was do everything that I loved. And again, not every day is going to look like that. And I guess really my point to all of this is, how much can you love yourself and also just accept the fact that sometimes you're not going to feel good? I just told you guys before, right? Like, yes, I'm saying this like, oh my God, it seems magical. But yes, I have anxiety and shit. You know what I'm saying? But what do I do? I have anxiety. I go for a fucking 40 minute meditation. I did it today. I had a little anxiety. I smoked a cigarette and I was like, I'm not feeling too good. Sat down, eyes closed. 40 minutes. Woke up, peace. Peace. I have modalities for every time I'm not feeling my best. Um, and to me, that's how you build it. I know what it is that I need. I know that I really, you know what I'm saying? I know what I want. I know I want to be successful. I know I want to share my artwork with the world. I know I want to show up as the most authentic person online that's ever lived. I know that I want to do something great. I know that I want to create really cool videos. I know that I want to have love. I know that I want a fucking family. I know these things. I know exactly what she's going to look like. I know exactly the ways that she's going to support me and show up for me. And I trust that it's all coming. And what I do is I put the work in every single day. I navigate those uncomfortable moments and I just learn to accept the fuck out of myself. I accept myself. If I don't have it, it's okay. If I wake up late, it's okay. If I don't set a boundary today with somebody and I didn't shoot my shot, it's okay. Chris, you're good, bro. You're good. I love you. Good shit. It's okay. You're a human being. Just enjoy the ride. You're not going to be perfect. And that's it every day, right? Enjoy the process. I mean, we're going to fucking die at some point. Let's be real. You know, none of this shit is going to matter. You might as well leave it all out in the field. That's the way I tell my, that's what I tell myself every day. Just put it out there. Just show up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm such a big believer in this. And this isn't like, this is some corny shit. But the truth is, is like, whatever you want in this life, you can create if you want it bad enough and you're clear about your goals and you need to accept yourself and you're not going to be perfect, but I, I can guarantee you because I mean, if you look at my fucking life, I'm just some like little fucking boy from Queens, New York. I grew up in a single family, single mom household. We didn't really have that much money growing up. I was scrawny. I got no fucking bitches. I didn't have tattoos. I didn't have muscles. I didn't have that many friends. I moved to Arizona. I didn't, I didn't know a single fucking person here. I had a fucking bullshit ass GPA in, in high school. I was just a guy. I was just a little fucking boy. But I don't know what happened. But I moved out on my own. And I took full fucking responsibility for my life. And I said, I'm going to just do it as best I can. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my hardest. And now we're here. And I guess my whole point is you got to enjoy the ride in every direction. I've had heartbreak. 
I've had love. You're going to get to where you want to go. Uh, but you got to accept yourself and you got to enjoy the moment. And then you got to make a life of design. You got to know what it is that you want. And then you got to get it, get after it. And you can't let anybody tell you that you can't have the things that you want. And you got to have that fierce belief that you could receive whatever the fuck you want. And you also got to have that fierce persistence. You can't fucking quit. And you can't fucking settle. <sighs> happiness is a mindset. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is an action. And I guess it's up to you how you want to live your life. All right. I know we didn't get to the audience question this week. Um, we'll tackle it next week. Uh, I love you guys. And if you ever want to work with me, you know where to find me. Um, and I'll talk to you soon.